Magnolia, which I think is one of the best films of the year and certainly one of the most audacious, which is not exactly saying the same thing. It cuts back and forth between several stories that unfold in a rainy Los Angeles where fathers and children are at war, where love seems impossible, where everyone seems to be half in the show business and where everyone seems to be half dead. One story involves a cop played by John C. Riley, who falls in love with a woman without seeing her clearly enough to realize she's strung out on drugs. She's played by Melora Walters. You don't know how crazy I am. It's okay. I've got troubles, okay? I'll take everything at face value. I'll be a good listener to you. I started this, didn't I? Didn't I? Whatever it is, just say it. You'll see. You want to kiss me, Jim? Yes, I do. Another story, Jeremy Blackman plays a little genius who's under tremendous pressure to win on a game show. Are we going to continue with this game? Yes. Hey, you look at me. Look at me. You are two days away from this record. Okay, nobody's ever done that. You get through this, I'll get you anything you want. Anything. Another story, the host of the game show, played by Philip Baker Hall, is dying of cancer. I have about two months. I have no time. It's in my bones. I don't have a chance. Oh. And still another thread. Julianne Moore's elderly millionaire husband is dying, and she's I'm filled sorry. with regrets. Philip Seymour Hoffman is the old man's nurse. Yeah, I'm going to turn away and walk away and not look at him. And I'll see my man, my Earl, and um, uh, tell him it's okay. I'm okay. Tell him thank you for taking care. And Magnolia also features Tom Cruise as a professional stud who conducts seminars on how to seduce women. Here he is giving a TV interview. Are you close? She's my mother. Yes, but I uh, mean, she's a woman, too. So, you know, how does she feel about seduce and destroy? I mean, what does she say? <laughs> well, she says, uh, you go get him, honey. All of these stories are compelling, and some of them are funny, and some of them are very sad. Despite cutting back and forth between them, Anderson is able to build up an uncanny amount of tension and dread in this movie. Magnolia is an urgent film. It's long, but it hurtles ahead through fears and dreams. And then, toward the end, there's a scene of transcendent wonder. A scene so unexpected and arbitrary and inexplicable that it pulls the rug out from under our traditional ideas of narrative and shows that the best laid plans of frogs and men go off to stray. I am so amazed by what you're saying about this movie because it almost seems as though you liked it. <laughs> I loved it. It's on my list of the 10 best movies of the year. Oh, incredible. I'll give you this. Okay. I thought it had a good cast. Yes. I thought, think it has a good filmmaker, yes. worthy themes, parental yeah. neglect, mm -hmm. the way it damages children and families, but the film is a mess. I really thought that all of these stories would have come together in some sort of unexpected, synergistic way. There would have been some sort of epiphany Joyce, at the end. The and these stories don't point. come together, and we're led to think that they will based on the initial little encapsulated stories say, at the beginning of the that's film. That's the whole point about the beginning of the film, where we have Ricky Jay narrating this little story about urban legends and strange coincidences and threads that come together and so forth. Exactly. In order to show you at the end of the film that instead of everything coming together the way you're led to think they will, mm -hmm. something utterly unexpected can appear something out of a clear blue utterly sky. Utterly ludicrous. I will only call no this more a, ludicrous a, a than climax anything else. of biblical proportions. Yes, but that it has actually be, happened. It should be. It may have happened. Yes, it actually has it happened. It should be a transforming event. What it transforms at the end is our expectation that every movie has to be dead in the water and be predictable and be formulaic and in the way we expect it to. This it movie is alive and free to surprises. It makes no sense.